The Reflecting Skin is a 1990 film directed by Philip Ridley. In a prairie community in the 1950s, Seth mistakenly believes that his neighbor, Dolphin, is a vampire. Tragedies begin to happen, such as the death of his friend. Seth's father is accused. He kills himself by immolation. Seth continues to see natural occurrences in his life as supernatural instead, such as the appearance of what he believes is an angel. Cameron, Seth's older brother, returns from military service. Cameron falls in love with Dolphin, to the alarm of Seth. Cameron is suffering from radiation poisoning, but this deterioration makes Seth believe that his brother is being drained by Dolphin. She is taken by a roving gang, and Seth decides not to warn her. In the end, Dolphin dies too, and Seth is left with questions about what is real and what is fantasy. Childhood does not so much transform into adulthood, rather, childhood is invaded by the adult world. Were it not, it would seem to go on forever, like Seth endlessly moving through the field of wheat, never changing each stalk of wheat identical to the next. Dolphin tells Seth that childhood is a nightmare and that it won't end in adulthood either but it is this invasion of the adult world into Seth's life that creates his nightmares. Seth attempts to process the murders and other adult happenings through his own childish filter, and with no adult guidance, he is forced to fend for himself and interpret everything only as best as a small child could. His mother is no help, constantly and frantically admonishing him for the slightest infraction. His father, falsely suspected of murder, commits suicide. His brother, fresh from war and changed by what he saw, offers no sympathy to Seth and has his own designs on Dolphin. The sheriff only sees Seth as a potential witness. Seth's fantasies are not the product of an overactive imagination, they are the end result of seeing the world without any rational guidance. So, when the adult world finally comes crashing into his, he can only see it through a child's interpretation, a child's understanding about what evil is. It is only at the end of the film, after he discovers for certain that Dolphin was no vampire but a victim herself, that Seth is forced to accept that there are no supernatural monsters. He has been forced into adulthood and the adult realization that the evils of the world are committed by ordinary people. But what is evil? Well, since post-World War II, moral and legal philosophers have been increasingly interested in the concept of evil. This interest has been partly motivated by accusations of evil by laymen, social scientists, journalists, and politicians as they try to understand and respond to the atrocities committed during World War II. It seems an understatement to call these actions merely wrong or bad, so we use the term evil in their place. The oldest theories of evil are supernatural and therefore related to how Seth sees the world that evil is conducted by forces unseen by human eye and manipulated by demons and creatures that go bump in the night, a monster or a tempter that draws humanity further away from God. One theory of evil is the universe is the product of an ongoing battle between two co-equal and co-eternal first principles, God and the devil. Good and evil are substances which are in constant battle for supremacy, the material world is a stage for this cosmic battle where the forces of evil are trapped by the forces of good. The human body is evil while the human soul is good and must be freed from the body. As for the monsters referenced in the film, the origin of the belief in vampirism may come from premature burials, ignorance of the body's decomposition, ignorance of disease contraction, or even the rare blood disease porphyria. Supernatural explanations for evil and difficult to explain behavior is a common reoccurrence in human history. This film, however, rejects the concept of supernaturalism as the cause of evil. If the reflecting skin has a point, a moral, it is what Dolphin tells Seth, and therefore the audience. Sometimes, terrible things happen quite naturally. The world desperately wants evil to have a root cause something remarkable, supernatural, or even simply abnormal, so to separate itself from ourselves, our lives, and our day-to-day -day activities. 
There is this book called Explaining Hitler by Ron Rosenbaum. It covers the variety of ways that experts tried to find some physiological, developmental, sexual, or psychoanalytic cause for Hitler's actions and the subsequent war. One paper attempted to trace Hitler's evil to a mosquito bite and subsequent encephalitis, which was known to cause personality changes. Others have ascribed a supernatural element to both the man and the war. It is comforting to try to prove that the awful, despicable actions of some are due to some aberration, a malfunction in human nature instead of the norm. It allows us to exempt ordinary human nature from having the potential for evil. Cameron, having fought in the military, depersonalizes himself and his victims. When Seth asks about a boy who suffered from the atomic bomb, he asks about his name. Cameron becomes angry that Seth tries to give him a name, give him an identity, give him personhood. Distance is needed for Cameron, psychologically, much like the distance people give evil and humanity. But this attempt at obfuscating human nature is, much like Seth, childish. He ascribes unnatural or fantastic explanations to occurrences that do not require any. Dolphin dresses in black because she is forever mourning her late husband, and over half a century ago, seeking out help from mental health issues attached even more of a stigma to it than today. That means she is not treated for her depression, her deteriorating mental health, her sadness, her loneliness. Not because she is a vampire. Cameron is sick and losing bits of his hair because of radiation poisoning. He came in contact with people and places that were struck by atomic bombs in World War II. His blood or his life force is not being drained by a vampire, nor is he under a hypnotic spell. He simply seeks comfort after a harrowing experience in the Pacific Theater. The Reflecting Skin's theory of evil is more in line with that of 18th century philosopher Immanuel Kant. Paraphrasing, he said that, 1. We are radically free, 2. We are by nature inclined toward goodness, and 3. We are by nature inclined toward evil. Seth does not receive such a lesson. Instead, he debates the rightness and wrongness of killing a frog with his friends, which leads to a supernatural discussion of the afterlife, showcasing the themes of the film straight away. So how did the victims die? Well, the obvious answer is that the roving gang is responsible. Another theory seems to be that Seth himself committed these murders and that the gang is a figment of his imagination, or the recollection of the event as an adult and unreliable narrator. The director has said that the film is like a memory of childhood. I suppose that's not the point, though. The point is that these actions, these evils, are not performed by vampires or demons or other supernatural forces. They are performed by people, and people can do evil all on their own. Hi everyone, if you like what I do, please click on the orange Patreon link below. That's how this show happens. It's also the only way to request an episode. Also, please like, share, subscribe, and click on the notification bell so that you never miss an episode. I'll see you next week.